How long does it take when you call 911? <laughs> For what? In case I electrocute myself. Oh, oh they're, they're around the corner. corner. They're not far. Just around the corner? Yeah. yeah. They're about a mile up the street. What a day. So we're at DFW Airport. It's crazy windy. We're fixing to hop a jet to Indianapolis, Indiana. I predict this is going to be a world's record trip because of all the delays. We're going to go rescue a Holy Grail CJ. We have not done that in the last two or three years, so grab your cup of joe and let's go. So far, so good. Only delayed by an hour and 15 minutes on the first flight. John Cruz, Dean Cruz, Ronnie, and y'all don't change this car out. So we're here at Indianapolis Airport. Avis hooked us up. We got a Jeep. We showed up, they had a Toyota. Beep, beep, we need a Jeep. The guy was incredibly helpful. Thank you, Avis. <laughs> good morning, Alex. Morning. How are you? Pretty good. I got me some gourmet coffee. Really? Yeah. So you know what you do with gourmet coffee if you don't know what it is? What? If it's not Blue Island coffee? You put caramel stuff in it. it tastes like caramel. <laughs> Caramel tastes great. Yeah. So it is crazy early in the morning. The fire is roaring. The fire is still roaring. <laughs> and it's the first day of the year that I've worn a long sleeve shirt. So it's cold outside. I noticed that. We're in Indianapolis, <laughs> going to Indianapolis. And believe it or not, we're going to go save a Holy Grail Jeep. So one of the things that you guys haven't seen on camera before, and Alex spends a lot of time over there, is we actually have an off-site warehouse full of Holy Grail Jeeps. Yep. Like truly Holy Grail Jeeps, right? Oh yeah. There's 30 of them in there. We've never filmed them. And for the first time on camera, we're actually picking up a Holy Grail CJ. Picked up a Holy Grail Jeepster, but never a CJ. So yeah. grab your cup of Joe and let's go. John? I am. Hi, right, Dennis Collins. Nice to meet you. You too, sir. How's everything? Good, good. A little rainy today, but good. <laughs> <laughs> the weather's good. It's not bad. Better than it was yesterday. We looked at the map, but those would be cooler than it is. Yes, yes. Better than it was yesterday, for sure. It was cold yesterday and rainy all day. Well, let's see this Jeep. I'm dying right. to see it. Let's go. It's <laughs> back here. Okay. So your, your dad bought it new or your my, grandfather bought it new? My grandpa bought it new. Grandpa bought it new. Yeah. Okay. He bought it brand new. And with the intentions of using it for multiple things, going out west and mountains and using it as a Jeep. So and if you were driving through this made. neighborhood, you would have never seen this Jeep. No, no. Because the garage is behind the house. Nope. It's cool. You would have never seen it. So it's actually sitting right there. Oh, we're all right. You just did that with one hand? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They make them strong in Indianapolis. Yeah. So that is it. Off-road vehicle sticker in '95. So was it? It was. Was it actually driven in '95? Yeah. Okay. We took it to Silver Lake, Michigan. Really? '95. Yep. Okay. Out in the dunes. Yep. We can move some of that stuff out of the way here. So date code on the top is '85, and the Jeep's in '86, correct? Yes. Yes. Morning, ma'am. How are you? Fine. <laughs> See, 
barcode sticker? Yeah. You know how we were the other day, we were trying to figure out where it goes? Yeah. There are different spots. I see them everywhere. And that's not where we put the one on the 85 we just did either, is it? No, it that's not where it was. No. Original hose clamps, which I really like. Radiator hose is original. Belt's original. This thing has not been touched. So here's the kicker. I'm going to let you look. What's that? Go see how many miles are on this Jeep. 5,500 miles. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Look under the hood and see what the color code is. I'm pretty sure it's going to be 5D. You're right, 5D. 5D, yes. 5D dark honey metallic. Honey interior, mm -hmm. which is, you know, are both special ordered. Alex is searching for a red Laredo with honey interior. So if one of you has one in your garage with less than 10,000 miles, yep. let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Check out his tilt, too. Tilt T5, power steering. Does that power brakes? It does not. No power brakes? Well, you can't have everything. Check this out. It's got striker plates. It must be a hard top with this Jeep. Maybe it's a two-top Jeep. Is it two tops? Yes. Okay. There's a hard top and doors with it as well. Okay. Yep. So can you tell us the story of the Jeep itself? I mean, yeah, you can. I, the, the best I know is grandpa bought it new in, in 86. And okay. like I said, he bought it to use it as far as going out west in the mountains in Colorado and using it for basically as a Jeep. And it, it never made it to Colorado, but we used it in the Smokies, took it with us, went camping. We went camping every summer as kids and that went with us quite a few years. and. We took it to Silver Lake in 95 and took it up in the dunes. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, he was in the Navy, is that right? He was in the Navy, yes. How yes. cool is that? He was in the Navy. And other than that, it really just kind of sat around and we drove around the yard, around the neighborhood a few times, and that's about it. We went to Michigan, actually, to pick it up. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that's, where, that's where you bought it, dude? Mm -hmm. oh, Michigan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's the uh, hardtop? The hardtop is out in the garage out here. Well, let's go check so that out. So we can walk out there. Okay. Yeah, everything's kind of kind of split around the around the the property here we can walk out there <laughs> so was it ever towed or was it always driven uh no it was towed it was towed so it was it's towed. got 5500 miles on it and how many of those do you think are tow miles oh not very many you get a flatbed trailer he pulled it on okay 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 you got a flatbed it's very good out there so it, wasn't, it wasn't a tow bar forward. pulling it. It, it it was tow barred a few times but not not much okay mostly it was on that trailer he bought that trailer especially for it so that's what it was pulled on the most. So there at the top, and obviously the mower that we use. Oh, look at that. It's been right there for about the last probably 30 years. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, it's not as bad as it looks. How are you going to get looks. that out, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> it's not as bad as it looks. What are the doors? The door, the doors are going to be fun. They're in the basement of the house. Sweet. <laughs> so the top's here, the Jeep's there, the door's in the basement. Yep. So he had no <laughs> inclination of ever selling that Jeep. <laughs> nope. Never the case of selling anything. How, he looks like he was a very particular guy. House is beautiful. He was. He was. Yeah. Beautiful. He kept the house clean and everything was always spotless. And I mean, finding a Jeep in that condition, which is what I search for and love. Yeah. Yep. We actually have about 30 of them, but we never show them on camera. Okay. Yep. Uh, this is this is the first one of that condition we show on camera. Oh, wow. Nice. Very um, nice. You know, obviously, you, you watch because you contacted me. Yeah, yeah. Most of what we do with classic cars, but my okay. passion is that. The Jeeps. I knew that. I knew that from previous shows back in the past. And uh, in a lot of times when we find some of this that condition, it's from a military guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was very particular. He was. He was. We pulled cars out. Every summer as a kid, we'd pull them out, wash them, put them back in, cover them up. That's really cool. Every one of these cars was like that. How about the paperwork? Can I see the paperwork? Yeah, she's got all that stuff in there. Yep. Okay. I'll have her grab it. She's got the original window sticker and all that good stuff for it. Is Grandma still out here? Will you have her get the paperwork for the Jeep? All right, let me grab my bag. How about the three of us going in and we'll do some business and we'll come back and I'll show you guys the paperwork in a minute. Guess what, Zach? We own it. Nice. So check this out, Alex. A couple of unusual things on a Renegade. Mini front carpet. Yeah. So there's no rear carpet. Weird. And they added chrome wheels. 
which they would have been white. Correct. Right? All Renegades were white. $321 option just for that. And it is a factory hardtop Jeep. Cool. Which you saw the hardtop. It is one owner, which is incredibly cool. Original title from 86. Naval Police Credit Union. Again, thanks to your granddad for his service. So, here's what I would like to do. Okay. <laughs> we need to take the soft top off. Yeah. I'm assuming you don't have a whole lot of room in the trailer. No, I got some bikes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think we should take the soft top off of this, put the hard top on it. Okay. You don't have room for the hard top in there, do you? No. Okay. We'll push it out, put the hard top on it, get down in the basement, which we haven't seen the doors yet, but you're a big dude. Yeah. They weigh 78 pounds. Yeah. But it's easy you threw that door open. It shouldn't be an issue. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right, so let's get after it. Yeah. It's not right for this Jeep. It's not right easy on that side over there. You guys can go back to the car. Sure how they got this in here. Uh, very carefully. You guys start turning the wheels up. I believe we've got to go through the house. Me neither. Look at that. Hmm. He was, he was really good at that. That's tough. Yeah, that would be worth it. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So, that might be the reason it didn't get driven. <laughs> you can't get in and out of the garage. <laughs> it, it's been moved a few times, but yeah. It's still got the original tires on it. Mm hmm. What's the plan, Alex? It's a little bit early for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we need to. I think we'll just take the soft top off now. <laughs> take it off. Put a floor jack under it and pull it over. So I got to probably get a floor jack. Yeah, probably yeah, be the easiest thing. Right there. Well, it's not right there, but easy to get to. No. Ready? It's got a Model 20 in it, so it's not one of the very last. It's not 90, easy to get to? Okay. 90 day Jeeps, but it is an 86. Oh, right there. There's one there, and there's an aluminum one over there that's got a bigger base on it. Yeah, that's probably the easiest one there. Honey yeah. console, too, which is really nice. Because a lot of times when they ran out of the color that they're color keen, they just do a black one in it. It's having a carpet kit in it. Yeah, I saw that. Aftermarket carpet. <laughs> So you want to buy some more bikes? He's got a motorcycle in there. <laughs> I don't think it'll fit the trailer, will it? <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that cover was, was custom made for that Jeep. Okay, wow. That's a perk. What a mess, what a mess. Nine one one nine hundred eleven miles. Is that for sale? No. Not okay. yet. <laughs> not yet. There's three of them here. That's, they're not for sale yet. <coughs> That'd be no. the one I want. Well, there's a there's a CT70 and a Trail 90 as well. Oh, that's right up there. That's the one of the other ones, right? Look at that. How much room do we have in the trailer? I can make those fit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very cool. Wow. All right, let's focus on what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I'll let you do this, man. I don't want to. <laughs> You've probably done a few more than I have. Yeah, I can. I think the stuff must have grown around the Jeep. You probably drove it in at an angle. Well, believe it or not, all that stuff was there when it went in. Really? <laughs> yeah. He was a professional at stuffing stuff in holes. Like that. So, what's the affinity of the ones? That was just his plate. All ones. Yep. That's really cool. He started it back in whatever that first plate is, 56. And went all the way to, I think, 98, 96. So and he had some after that, too. See that nine and all the ones? Yep. That motorcycle in there, he stopped riding it at 911. Really? Go look at the odometer. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just looked at it. Yeah, How yeah. Crazy I didn't pay attention that? to that. Yeah, that, the 40, must have been, that must have been one of his things. Well, the 49 was the, the county. That's the county we live in. Okay. And the ones was just his numbers. That's what he he just picked it. It was nothing special, just different. He just liked all the ones. Wow. That's a cool plate collection. Yeah. Really yep. neat. Need some help, Alex? So Alex rolled through Auburn yesterday and picked up some of the stuff we bought from the Denny Canterbury collection. What do you think about the CDX? I think that's cool. Incredible, huh? Yeah. We got motorcycles in there, we got a snowmobile, we've got Polaris Star Car. 
Yep. And now, one of the finest CJs in the country, hopefully we can fit it in there. 1,500 miles up here? Yep. 1,500 miles back. Zach and I flew. My arms are super tired. <laughs> Took forever to get here. Sure it did. What, a whole two and a half hours? <laughs> yeah. Well, we had to lay over the airport for two and a half hours. Still, I mean, after all these years, it's so cool finding stuff like that in the garage. Oh, yeah. They even got Alex smiling on this one because he loves CJs. Believe it or not, he does. I do. Everybody thinks he's just a classic car guy, but he's a Jeep guy too. Oh, one of them fell over. That would sure be a tragedy if we opened the door and one of the motorcycles fell over. Man, I got some great motorcycles in there. I don't know if I can get those bought or not. Should have brought more cash. Look at that. Stayed upright. I think it'll fit perfect. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Super rare bike too, advance of time. Wow, the snowmobile and player star car is smaller than I remember. Lowest mile CVX in the entire world. Yep. Did you push it on backwards? And Maybe. spin it around? Maybe. I pulled right through the door. You went forward. No. So this had eight tenths of a mile on it when I bought it. Denny Cannonberg made his son-in-law, whenever this was ever moved, push it backwards. I actually have a picture before I pushed it. It was eight tenths, it says nine now. Yep. <laughs> I, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. I took a picture before I touched it. Okay, well somebody pushed it. It's okay. I'm not upset. Sure. How cool is that? Oh, that's so cool. I'm getting, I'm getting that running and driving around Connor's house. Oh, I'm in. I think the only issue is gonna be finding tires. So, we got room, but we're, we don't have room for the hard top. We, we definitely have to put it on the Jeep. Yeah, unless we turn the bike sideways. Hard top will ride better on the Jeep. Okay. Won't get damaged. All right, let's do that. We, we drive through these small towns all the time. We're always looking for CJs. This one was in a garage behind a house, garage door shut. 5,500 miles, i never found that. And to restore one to that level, which we do every month, a lot of work. <laughs> All right, we are going to have to take the soft top off, which is not a big deal. Let's put the hard top on it. All right, Alex. Stuck like Chuck. There you go. The muscle. So since this Jeep didn't come with a soft top for the factory, this will likely get used on a restoration. Mm, yeah. The hard top will just go back on this, so this will the regional window sticker will match. Right, right, yeah. I've got a NOS Honey carpet kit. Okay. Go back in there. So we'll, we'll make this exactly like it was on the window sticker. You're teaching me, because I've never done this. Never done a CJ soft top? Nope. Well, the key is on these things right here, see how the paint's nicked? Yeah. Is to be careful. Makes sense. <laughs> And you've got your little cups in here that the rods go in. See that? I do know that. Okay. So just lift this up. Pull this rod out of the cup. So what you want to do is get all the hardware out first, and then we'll take the top off and fold it up carefully. Alex, see this right here? Yes. Yeah. So this cup goes in the rod itself. Okay. So pull it back. Also being careful not to hit the top. So what we want to do is to get all the hardware out first. See how this stuff was galvanized? Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's one of the things in the CJ restoration, even the soft top stuff, just to get that right, it's kind of a pain because you got to galvanize it. These are not snapped right now, but they're supposed to be. Okay. So when you snap that right there, that's what keeps it tight. Okay. So I'm snap that. And see the ones in the back on the roll bar? Yeah. They're not snapped either, but they're supposed to be. So just make it a little bit easier to get it off. Once you've got those rods out, we'll pull it out from the header. Just go back with that one. And just lay it on the side of the seats is what I normally do. Just 
just tucks in just like a bikini top does. Now what I normally do is kind of drag this right in, but I don't think it's going to hurt it, is I lay it like that, okay. and then we'll fold it in. crisp that is. Brand new. Really cool. So the honey tops were never available in the aftermarket ever. It's the only time you'd ever you're ever gonna find a honey top is it's gonna be new old stock or off of a Jeep like this. On the vinyl side, you got like that. We'll fold the windows in. Crisp the gauges are. So it's definitely not sat outside. Once you get the bows off, I'll go put this in the trailer. So condition-wise, I've seen a lot of short mile CJs. The interior of this thing is absolutely crisp. The gauges are perfect. It's always sat inside. Original tires. No flash rust under the hood. To restore CJ to that level, which we do, you're talking four or five hundred hours. To find one that's been taken care of like that, you know, treated with kid gloves like it was a Ferrari, is just awesome. So we're looking for 210 more just like that. So hit us up at socialcbjeep.com if you've got a one owner 7686 CJ with less than 10,000 miles, or less than 20,000 miles, or we might even send it up to 30. But Throw them like that. One last wheel. Of course. Let me give you a hand. That's all I got. I'll be here all day. Not liking it, is it? Nope. You want me to do it? Yeah, that. We need a camera dude in here. I'm going to try the old school trick, Alex. It's called impact. Do you have an impact screwdriver in your box? No. So what it does is when, when you hit it, it turns. Yeah. It compresses and it turns. If it works, it's going to be outstanding. If it doesn't, <laughs> and I break the windshield, it's a total fail. What's going to happen? Seems like a theme for our past couple episodes. <laughs> yeah. So why are we wasting an inordinate amount of time doing this? Because the hard top won't go on this Jeep with this on there. Yep. And uh, there's no room in the trailer for the hard top. Why are you laughing, Alex? Uh, Zach said something. Here, keep turning it. That thing is stuck like Chuck. Look at the gauges in this thing. Clean. Incredible. So, <clears throat> what are we gonna do if we miss our flight today, which is looking like a pretty good possibility? Buy another car? And <laughs> drive it back. Why is this thing not moving? Race you back on the motorcycle. I don't think either of them run. <laughs> It's moving a little bit and it's just not gonna get it's just not going. Is he have a W40 in there? He's looking. Usually for me, if I tighten it first and break it. Ah. You, you know what we needed? It was the impact for the hammer. 
Craftsman screwdriver. Look at that. <laughs> See, this is a Sears model. We had to step up to the Craftsman. Yep. Good thinking, Alex. I think the quality of that's a little bit better. Yeah, a little is. bit better grip. Outstanding, John. We just needed a better tool. Yeah. He's it. a better tool than I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So that fell into the nothing's easy category. Hey Zach, I don't know if I pointed this out or not, but these gauges are really crisp. Are they? Yeah, they really are. <laughs> I haven't seen them yet. You haven't said anything. You ready, Alex? Yeah. So you know what I forgot to say, Alex? It's the first time this Jeep's seen the light of day since 1995. Okay. There's a manual kit in there? Yep. Let's Perfect. show everybody that. Outstanding. Dennis, have you seen these gauges yet? Yeah, they're pretty crisp, Zach. Check them out. I like them. New shocks. Don't know why, but... Install the soft top. I bet that soft top was expensive. So the window sticker, which I've already put up, was, was close to $13,000. Let's put that in perspective in 1986. This is a Renegade. Yeah. No AC. So, but it was it was highly optioned. That's really neat. You rarely see that. Pre-delivery inspection sheet. But to put that in perspective, a loaded CJ back in 86 would cost you as much as a Corvette or a Cadillac. Yeah. This was not a cheap toy. That's cool. I've seen those before. That's the locking lug nut on the back. It's the spare. carpet. Documents are great. Jeep's great. Have you we, seen the gauges yet? We pointed, yeah, I saw the gauges are really nice, Zach. So we <laughs> I pointed out earlier that you know they came with white wagon wheels. The Renegades did be special orders chrome ones on this Jeep. Cool color. Alex, you want another piece of trivia? What's that? The underhood light is not standard on a CJ. Okay. That's part of the Renegade and the Laredo package. Not a big deal, but have you ever seen this? A warranty? Or the passenger side seat belt? I can't say that I have. Wow, that's incredible. What else will we find today? At this rate, we're gonna miss our flight. Let's go get the hard top. So John, you got this cool stuff everywhere. Yeah, yeah. What's in that garage? Which one? That one right there. Well, that's the back of the other one, and it has a Corvette in it. No way. Yep, it's got a Corvette 78. And a 91 Mercury Capri, little turbo convertibles they made. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got one of those on a lift. They're on a lift back there. So and you're gonna call me when you're ready to sell that Sitting, stuff? Yeah, oh yeah. Sitting no, outside, there's a 51 Chevy sedan delivery. Right in, right inside the little, the little, about the tractor there. Yeah, that's some cool stuff. Yep. And by the looks of this, this is a 32. 32. Can I look at it? Sure, absolutely. He restored it back in the 60s. You had a cool was, grandfather, this, sir. Yeah, I, 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 I grew up here. This was, yeah, this is emotional for all of us. I mean, you know, wow. But yeah, he was he was a car guy, and it, it definitely rubbed off on me. Cause this is the original motor over there. I believe that? that's the one that came out of the '44 okay, pickup. Got it. The original one for this, I think, is actually in the back garage. Okay. It's back there. Wow. On, on a Shut that, that door. Background. Yep. You know, the, they, you know how they move around a lot. This one, no, it hasn't. It hasn't no, the door fits great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it hasn't been out of here. I think we had it out of here about six or seven years ago. Let's see if the motor's in it, Alex. And just pushed it back in. And then we got it running. Yes, it is. Holy Grail Ford. Yeah. 32s. That one's going to my garage. He did a pretty good job restoring it. Yeah, he actually did it right here in this building, believe it or not. He did it right here in this garage. That's awesome. They built this house, I believe, in the early 60s. And they've been here ever since. That's really cool. Yep. All right, Alex, you get that corner. All right. John, you got the front. Yes, sir. I'll grab this corner. And whenever you're ready inside there, sir, let us know. Go. Okay, hang on a second. I'm, I'm flapping over here. All right, let's go up. What's the front corner? There's 
So this hardtop's been in that garage for 30 years. Might be one of the best condition of hunting hardtops in the world. I think I'm carrying all the weight. <laughs> How did that work out? Ready? Yep. So see these right here? Yeah. When you remove it the first time, that tells the dealership that it's been off before. So it's designed to crack. But what's cool is these were color keyed to the tops. That's weird. So if you wanted to find a honey warranty safety clip, you'd never find one. The footman's loop's gotta come off. Not that I haven't taken the hardtop and doors off at CJ's 1,400 times. I'm gonna blame this on Alex. Yep. You're supposed to be teaching me. Correct, I didn't do a very good job. So the footman's loops have to come off. This falls under the category of nothing's easy. The doors are in the basement. Need to, oh, you, sir. you need to put like a counter of like how many times you said that. <laughs> 50 years worth of pull. There's not actually. I got a flashlight. It's not very big. Look at that. I got my flashlight. Yeah, I told you it was 60 years of pool down here. Okay. 60 years of cool. So we were not they're actually behind there. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. No. <laughs> I told you they were they were pretty deep. So did you think we weren't going to show up? No, I, I just you told me not to pull them out, so I didn't. <laughs> They're still there. Awesome. Make you help me get them out. <laughs> uh, I'll, we'll, we'll help for sure. <laughs> They're Alex will. in there. Or Zach will. Somebody I promise will. you. I, I stepped back in there. They are there. I saw just Ooh. enough brown and black that I knew they were still there. One hour later. I'm gonna let you guys carry that if you don't mind. Yeah. So what's neat about these being in such good shape, John, is these, you cannot get this in honey, this applique. Mm. And the door panel itself on the other side, Yeah. you cannot get that in honey. Wow. And the pole in honey. So really rare set of doors. Love it. Cool. That's a great work, Alex. Thank you. Zach, you need some light? Yes, please, thank you. Like a toddler. <laughs> just sort of like that. Both gotta go at the same time. Perfect. And so what you do is you get these on and just kind of wiggle them back and forth until they drop. Hinges are a little sticky. <laughs> I understand. You want it? Yep. That should be enough for the ride, I would think. I would put one in the back. Too. Safety first. That's what Alex always says. Safety first. Pretty sure we're going to miss our flight. So what are we going to do in Indianapolis, Zach? What is there to do? I don't know. What's taking so long, Alex? My hands are dirty. <laughs> Should have worn gloves. Somebody commented that the other day, that you need to wear gloves more often. You're good. Maybe they should send us some. Man, these gauges, you should see them, they're super crisp. Are they? Yeah. Nice. Okay, I got brakes, so let her rip. Are we good? Go ahead, guys.
We're going all the way. Gotta love it. Oh, you already got the winch ready. Forward thinking there, Alex. Yeah, I'm sure. I planned that. 1986 CJ7 Renegade. The last and final year of the CJ, which is the ultimate CJ for most people. This was the Renegade package. You had the base package, the Renegade package, the Laredo package. Bought this from Mr. John Smith. I don't know if your parents were upset at you when they named you that, but. <laughs> I actually go by Wesley, my middle name. Okay, so. that's probably yeah. a good idea. Yeah, it is. It you is. told me, John. For, for, for legal terms, it's a lot easier, yes. But anyways, I, I'm super excited about this. I'm good. glad you called me. Good. Uh, we never discussed numbers on camera, but I paid the moon for it. Yeah. It's worth it to me. Absolutely. I love it. And a, we, we like that it's going. A 5,500 mile 5D dark honey metallic renegade with Laredo wheels, which your grandfather special ordered those, which mm -hmm. is an added option. Added option the hard top. Power steering is added option. T5 tilt wheel. What a cool Jeep. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for selling it to me. Hey, you're welcome. We're last and, going to a good home. Last and final question. Yeah. What is your favorite local food? Around here, I like a little bourbon and barbecue in Speedway. Bourbon and barbecue. Yep. Well, that's where we're going to go, and you're welcome to join us if you want to. All righty, cool. All right, so but we're going to get this loaded up. You said you got the rear bumper for it? Yes, he went to go get it in the back of his truck. He'll bring it over for you. Thanks Let's for calling you. me. Thanks for yeah, your time. Yeah, hey, no problem. All right, I'm going to buy you dinner. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. lots of years on the property as well, so. You too, sir. Oh, no. No, no. I insist. No, no. I'm going to light it on fire. I'll put it no. in the pocket. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm down to 50s. I'm getting thin. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a tough day for me. <laughs> So we're barbecue going to bourbon and barbecue. barbecue. We don't have a whole lot of time. We might miss our flight. The things we do for the Coffee Walk fans. Are you going with us? No, I wish I could. I got I got to clean the mess up over here and put stuff well, away. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Yes, you really too. Was. Have a great day. Really good. We're gonna go eat. So we missed barbecue and bourbon in Indianapolis. I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite places of all time in the entire world, Strucker's Ice House. And they have the best burgers in town. It actually says that on the sign. But this is Mr. Rick Ferris's place. He's one of my mentors, one of the guys I respect the most in the entire world in the industry. Top motorcycle guy in the world. They have great hamburgers, so here we go. This is the ultimate place to be on a motorcycle. Saturdays and Sundays, there are literally not hundreds, but thousands of motorcycles here. This is Richard and I's favorite haunt. We always ride our Harleys too and hang out. They got their, there's always a band here, but he's got the coolest, most eclectic stuff ever. Let's go see if we can find him. And he's always here. So if he's not traveling, he's just like me. If I'm not traveling, I am at Collins Motors. You can find me there. If Rick's not traveling, he's here. And I called him, he said he's here. And we got Chelsea. Is your dad here? He is here. Should I go get him? Either you can or I can, it's up to you. Oh, you should walk back there. So this is Chelsea, not Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and my daughter get confused letters, all the time, it's right? The same way. You're not going to give me a hug? Oh, really? I will. I will. <laughs> it's been a while. Yes. It's great I know. to see you. I know. It's a beautiful day. So I called your pop, to told him I needed a favor. I'm sure for you he'd oblige. He said, okay. <laughs> we'll take you right back there. Well, this is crazy maze of where to get to Rick's office. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots to check out while you're coming back here. Have you ever got lost here? Not me, uh-uh. But I was come running around. You were born here. Been raised. Yes. I have a friend of yours. Did it college. <laughs> How are you, sir? Did it college. It's great to see you. Yeah, good Thanks to see you. Thanks for taking my call and for having us. Yeah, you betcha. How's everything? It's good. Let me turn this cowboy radio off. All right. What's happening? Well, we were filming today, our coffee walk show we do every Friday. Right. We're in Indianapolis. Which I enjoy it by the way. Have you really watched that? I do. I saw you pick up that Ford and that uh, and that Mustang. I saw you pick up that Mustang. Uh, yeah, in Buffalo, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah. Rick Fellers actually watches Coffee Walk. Absolutely. That's probably one of the biggest compliments I've ever had. Yeah. So you're one of my favorite people of all time. I appreciate that. And you're that. one of my mentors. I think you know that. I appreciate if that. If you don't, I'm not going to tell you you are. I appreciate that. I know that Richard and I have always enjoyed what this institution here that you've created. Right. To me, that's what it is. It's the coolest place in the world right now for motorcycles. Right. There's nothing like it in the world. Not even in California. No, it's different. And the, the whole thing that we want is a place where people can hang out 
and when people come here, I don't care if they're riding a Harley or a, a Honda or a, a Ford Pinto, I don't care. And when they come here, I don't care if it's Ross Perot, who was one of my customers before he died, or an unemployed cook. Everybody gets treated with the same respect. I think you told me that over 20 years ago. I did. Because we wrote some stupid things down here, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't always Harleys. Didn't, no. <laughs> but the times reason, have changed. The reason for my visit, which we do come by and have burgers here often, Richard yep. and I do, we love it. We ran out of time on our segment today in Indianapolis. Okay. So we like to tell our viewers what actually happened. We had to get to the airport. Right. We tried to get another flight, couldn't get one. We bought some wonderful stuff. So, landed back in Dallas. I, I just want to show one of my favorite places in the world, which is your place. I appreciate that. Can we go? Yeah, so what do we do? What do we want to see the place and get a killer burger. Okay, so this is my office, obviously. <laughs> So the whole thing here is, you know, I'm a child of the 60s and the 70s, and I want to be surrounded by things that give me good memories, you know. So my whole place is, is like, a, a guy told me one time, every time I come in here, it's like walking back into 1969. I took that as a compliment. I would agree with that. Yeah. And to those of you who see my office, and they, whenever my office shows up on camera, which is very rare, right. it's a disaster. Right. <laughs> you win, sir. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean it's a disaster, but there's a lot of stuff in mine's here. A, mine's pretty much a disaster, too. But so. I actually know where everything is in my office. I That's, really do. I do, too. I really do. I, I, I mean, I I've went got to, piles on piles on piles, but I know what's in that pile. I went to Sturges about five or six years ago when one of my daughters decided to clean my office and organize it. I thought I was going to have a heart attack when I got back. <laughs> I couldn't and you're not a hoarder? No. Me either. No, I just collect stuff. Got it. You have time for a tour? Yep. So do you want to go, you want to start in the showroom or you want to start back in service or where you want to go? I want to start back there because this okay. place is huge yeah. and it's like a maze. So we're two and a half acres, over 50,000 feet under roof and we'll come through, through here. So I like to show this is this is what I call the family rooms with all the pictures and stuff on it. So I always show people me and my attorney. We're 11 months apart. So my brother is uh, my brother is my attorney and he's my best friend and he's one of the top attorneys in the country. So my mom would dress us as twins <laughs> and would say, "Mom, we're not twins," and she'd say, "You're 11 months. You're Irish twins." So. You know, and all these years later, he's still my best so friend. So what city? He's in Houston. No, what city from Ireland are you from? Yeah, I'm not. I'm from Irving, Texas. No, but initially? I don't know. Okay. No, well, I'm I Irish have no too, clue. So. I have no clue. My family's from Cork. Cork? Yep. One of my sisters did a family tree thing. Yeah, that's why I asked. Yeah, and, but I don't remember. I All don't right. remember. Well, fair enough. Let's go through the maze. Yeah, it's okay. Let's so, go. I've been here many times, and I I still could not get, navigate through here by myself. No, it's, <laughs> a, it's a different... It's it's all chopped up. Pardon the pun. Chopped up. Choppers chopped everywhere. Up. Yeah, so we work on anything American-made is what we work on. Most of our business is Harley's. But we also do Victory, Big Dog, Iron Horse, Borgette, you know, any of that kind of stuff. And we build custom bikes such as this one here. So I just picked this one up the other day from uh, the Sturgis Hall of Fame Museum, which I'm, I'm in. I'm in that museum. So I picked this up the other day and I'm going to take this one to replace it. So that's why this one's out. We're getting it ready to uh, to take back. Have up you ever had or seen a gym fueling bike? I have. Are they incredible? They are incredible. My friend Corey Ness, Arlen Ness's son, yeah. has one or two, and uh, that and a Crocker are like my holy grail motorcycles. Yeah, and I, I just cannot seem to find one. They're they're out there, but they're hard to find. Oh, yeah. So these are also bikes in the service department that are waiting to be worked on. My bat shop is there. And this is Punch Wally. This is Punch Wally. So the bikes here, these are also bikes in the service department. The, the ones with the sheets over them back there belong to Herschel Walker. 
Herschel Walker is a really good friend and we do a lot of stuff with Herschel who Herschel's now running for Senate in Georgia. Do you know that? Yes, sir, and I'm going to support him. Oh, my God. The guy is a, a, one of the nicest human beings, as you know, Agreed. in the world. He's and just, one of the best Dallas Cowboys ever. He is. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's incredible. But Herschel has 60 motorcycles and 150 cars, and he keeps them at his house in Georgia. He also lives in DFW, but he keeps those at his house in Georgia. How many motorcycles do you have that are actually yours? Uh, and I, I know it's know. a lot. <laughs> 50 maybe, something somewhere in there. And all the bikes that Rick has, which I've seen, maybe not seen all of them, are insanely right. crazy overbuilt and expensive. I, which doesn't make sense to my wife, but you know, I mean, it's, it's like just, your shirt. <laughs> yeah, just, just stuff that we do. So this is Punch Wally Garage. So we do, we do some classic cars, a 68 Charger, 65 Vet, 69 Vet up there. Uh, I just I was just out driving my 55 Bel Air. It's my 57 3100 there. This place is so cool. We so, just finished a 62 Nova up that was, came out fantastic. It was fantastic. I've got a question for you that I've, I've heard many many times. Yes, sir. Is it true that you have sold more beer in a weekend than anybody in Texas? At one time, that was true. That's a lot of beer. That's a lot of beer, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, things have changed in the in the Harley-Davidson world. Yeah. Mainly because the baby boomers, the baby boomers have, you know, the baby boomers are aging out. So that's why Harley is, is... Uh, I still love Harley. Oh, I, I mean, do I too. Just... But that's part of the, part of the deal is the baby boomers are getting old. So these are some of my personal cars back here. The 69 C10 is my favorite vehicle, my favorite car truck. That's the one I drive most of the time. I just pulled it back here yesterday. So the, the paint work that Rick does on his bikes and obviously on his trucks, I've been in the restoration business for 38 years, takes more time than building the bike itself. It's, it's is that an, not it's, right? Yeah, it's like painting this truck. It that, took that's forever incredible. to paint it took forever to paint it and people say you know you could wrap it for a lot cheaper and you could and I have a few company vehicles that are wrapped and wrap is cool but there's nothing like paint wow, that's amazing it's just it just paint takes forever and it's very expensive but it just uh, I don't know so those two boxes you just showed us at uh Go to the Peterson. Yeah. How many hours? Well, those just... aren't at the Peterson. Those were in the Sturgis Hall of Fame okay. Museum. Even better. Even better for me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So how many hours to paint one of those bikes? Uh, just the paint. Five hundred. Yeah. That's a major restoration. It's a major deal. It's a major deal. It takes months and months, and you know they'll have, and those bikes are so intricate you can walk around them and look a dozen times and not see everything. So, and I have. So when I get, when I give it to the painter, I'm gonna give him the raw metal, everything's ready to go, and then I give him a bunch of paperwork with pictures and notes and all that. And I'll say, now how come, how come you got uh, Abby Hoffman over here? Now, where's my notes? I got Abby Hoffman supposed to be painted on the, and most people don't know who Abby Hoffman <laughs> is. But he's supposed to be painted, you know, and it's like, it doesn't matter. He, to me, it does matter. There's a it's like I'm the head coach and I'm the architect of this thing and I can see it a certain way. So that's why I give them the notes and the pictures and what I want and where I want it. And it's the same way when we're building a bike. But the good thing is people will come up and they'll say, sometimes it's a customer, sometimes it's one of my employees. They'll say, hey, boss, you know what? Have you thought about doing this? This might be kind of, and sometimes it is. You know, so you never know where that inspiration or that idea is going to come from. Who is your favorite motorcycle guy of all time? Because from my experience mm -hmm. and Richard's experience, who's my best friend, it's been you. Well, I appreciate that. In, in, in my world, for custom motorcycles, the king has always been Arlen Ness. And when, when Arlen Ness died a few years ago, that was a... That was a a very somber 
reality knowing that the king is the king of what we do has has passed on. It's tough. Lost Indian Larry too. Yeah, lost Indian Larry. There's a big difference between Agreed. those guys. I, 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 but, I, I was in my thought process. No, that's I exactly shouldn't right. even throw that out. But yeah, he, he was he was a big icon. And, Absolutely, he was, and he was a very, very, very nice guy. And I spent a lot of time talking with Indian Larry, not near as much as I have with Arlen Ness. But Indian Larry was more of a kind of a fanatical, love motorcycles and do some crazy stuff. Arlen Ness was like the analogy I use because I'm from Dallas, Texas. Arlen Ness is like the Tom Landry of the motorcycle industry. I mean, he was just a class act. Right. He's just a class guy. With the top hat, the suit, the yeah, whole deal. he was he was just a class guy. But he was he was the he's been my mentor for all these years. Well, I think you're the mentor to everybody now. But who's up and coming? Who do you who do you like? Uh, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. The styles have changed. They have. They've morphed and changed a lot. I, yeah. I, for a while, I followed Martin Brothers, mm -hmm. you know, Joe Martin. Absolutely. Pretty radical stuff. Yeah. But he's a super nice guy. Joe and his brother Jason are both super nice guys. Joe, you know, started out as a painter. Right. So he, a quick story, and Joe might get mad at me for saying this story, but 20 something years ago, Joe was painting for a little shop in Irving called Custom Motorcycles of Dallas. And Joe was doing some of their paint, so I called him over here, and this would have been in uh, 97, 98. And I had him paint something and it, it came back and it wasn't very good quality. <laughs> and he charged me like four or $500. And I said, Joe, 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 that's not what I want. When you do something for Rick Fairless, I want it to be absolutely perfect. And I want it to be the best that you can do. And I know your work is awesome. And he said, yeah, but on the price range on this. And I said, throw all that out. There is no price range. We're gonna pay for quality and that's the whole thing is, you give me your quality best and you charge me what you feel is fair and I'm gonna pay it and I'm never gonna complain. And I did. And when he, gave, when he redid that gas tank for me, it was a, actually a complete set gas tank and fender, it was unbelievable. Yeah, he's a talented guy. He's very talented. He's super nice. Yeah. Uh, he is super nice. I could tell you a few stories, but I'll keep them to myself. All right, fair enough. Well, let's roll back through, and yeah. the reason we're here, for a burger. <laughs> so, well, destination you know, location, this is it yes. for sure. My how are you? My Hi, sister Denise. Denise. How are you? Outstanding, how are you? I'm good. I'm so, good. they're hungry. They're hungry? It's we are hungry. We haven't even eaten today yet. What you hungry for? I want a double cheeseburger with everything on it, plus jalapenos. Mustard or mayo? Both. Chips, fries, tots, or onion rings? All three. <laughs> <laughs> One of each. Load him up. Yes, ma'am. Load him up. Sounds good. What do you want to drink? <laughs> I'm going to have a water. Cameron. Water? water. the good stuff there's y'all sides and so we got all three got all three that's what i wanted it's a Thank sample you, platter yeah. all right what do we got <laughs> we got a killer double cheeseburger with good? jalapenos tater tots onion rings they call them chips but i think they're fries and then we got zach's burger he's still eating peanut butter and jelly rick <laughs> he's a kid <laughs> he's a kid you got captain crunch in the morning peanut butter jelly at lunch <laughs> yeah. i'm trying to get in there so let's check this thing out i have eaten here many 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 times if that doesn't look good wow you gonna need those napkins outstanding so Man, thanks for spending time with us today. Hey, it's no, so it's cool. It's always good when you and Richard come to see me. We love it. It's one of our favorite places in the world for sure. Are you ready for Best Bite? <laughs> so if you're traveling from anywhere in the entire world and you want a killer Best Bite, you've got to come to Rick's place. This is it. Mm. I may have bit off more than I can chew, sir. 
I don't think so. I don't think so. Even if you're not hungry, you got to come to Stroker's Ice House. Some of the coolest stuff you'll ever see in your entire life. Whether you're a motorcycle guy, car guy, or just an eclectic person. Please like, tag, share, and follow. you got to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're doing our best for you. See you next week. <laughs> so when you can look around here because Rick is a very eclectic guy. I mean, the Kip's big boy is freaking rad. Isn't it? There's just stuff everywhere. What is the 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 most number of people you've ever had here? Uh, 4,000, 4,500, <laughs> something like that. And that's why he sells more beer than anybody else. Yeah, so it gets it gets crowded. It it's gets fun. Crowded. It's really, really fun. It's a cool place. And so, you can actually come down here and see. I don't know if this You can see anything. Well, you can I mean, see anything. The guys can wear their colors in here too though, right? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so a lot of places they can't. So you can actually see a Hell's Angels talking to a scorpion, talking to whoever you want. Right. And everybody gets along here, right? Yeah, and that's the whole thing is, you know, when people come here, everybody's the same. So it doesn't matter if you're a, a bandito or if you're a, an unemployed cook or if you're Richard Rollins or Ross Perot, everybody gets treated with the same respect. We were here, your memory seems to be really good, but it was a long time, probably 10 years ago, and there was a little minor scuffle going on, and you walked out and you said, hey, if you guys can't get along, leave. Yeah, that's exactly And right. everybody listened to him. I, I was like, that is impressive. It, it's it's just that there's really no other place like this, like you said, around I don't think there is in the entire world. I mean, I've been everywhere. I don't think there is either. And people know, if, if people come in here, they're in my house. And, you know, the respect that I give the Banditos, for instance, they run the state of Texas. And the respect that I give them, they give me the same respect back. You know, so the whole point is, don't disrespect me in my house. We're not going to disrespect you, and you guys are welcome. Y'all are awesome, but don't disrespect me in my house. And for the most part, everybody's on their best behavior when they come. Here. And they are. It's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's such a cool place.